Hello, Rose. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hi. She says hey. Hey. <laughs> morning good morning happy sunday <laughs> happy sunday i have showered but i put my pajamas back on i'm all cozy well, I, I was gonna actually put my pajamas back on as well because i'm going out <laughs> later this afternoon so i thought oh do i just put them on? but i have got my pajama bottoms on and i just put a sweatshirt on <laughs> i know it's actually quite nice doing it on a sunday morning paul's just took edward up for a nap mum's here so mum's yeah. like got the other two in there and um yeah something quite nice about it and actually i had we had a easy night last night we just watched the boxing we had a curry takeaway had like a semi kind of early night but Thursday night I actually went out and I've seen you've been out so should we have a little chat about our nights out why well, do you actually you haven't been out, out. You, had a, you had a kitchen party <laughs> <laughs> well yeah kind of not really but just yeah maybe one too many proseccos did you have a hangover yeah so Friday so Friday um our friends Tom and Sarah come over and they, they bought their little girl Bella and all the kids were playing and it was so funny. Sarah walked in, she was like, I bought a bottle of, of Prosecco. She was like, I need a glass. And this was at about half five. So anyway, so we had a glass I of like Prosecco. I like it, starting early. Early, <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, just bathed Margot as well. I was like, yep, okay, let's have a glass. So, And then before you knew it, we'd had a couple of bottles of Prosecco. And Ooh. yesterday, when I mean I had so much to do yesterday, it, it was, was a write-off. Write off. Mm. It was a complete write-off because... Obviously, I'm still up with Margot in the night. Yep. And I know it sounds silly, but I feel like I feel like I'm still not used to alcohol. Like it doesn't agree with me that much. It honestly it I, does not agree with me. No, and obviously, like we do it. It's like the worst thing, isn't it? But I just had that horrible, like prosecco head headachey washing machine tummy all day yesterday Ooh, I was meant to go and get my nails done like do loads of stuff like bits just like potter around like stuff that I couldn't get done this week and it was all out the window so I've learned my lesson now so don't drink Prosecco on a Friday <laughs> that's it I mean you know my my situation but the listeners might not I as much as I love Prosecco and love a glass of wine Apart from one or two maximum, I can't drink it, can I, Billy? The next day, I am no. sick all day. Like, it's the worst thing for me. And so I have to just stick to, really, gin and tonic. Or I can have a couple, but then that's it. Like, I have one of those terrible hangovers. Yeah. Where I, I think I must be allergic to something or an ingredient that's in, like, white wine and Prosecco. It must be something. I think if I had, like, a... A, a, an allergy test to do with alcohol it would probably say do not drink that because it, it physically makes me sick all day anyway Thursday night we done a couple's night and we went that to Leo's amazing and it was really really fun so I'll, I'll explain a little bit about it so Leo's for those that haven't been to the one in Ibiza they've just opened one uh, over here in London it's like the old Cafe de Paris Billy I was getting so many memories when, I, when we pulled up and I went oh, in and was walking when, down the stairs can you remember we always used to go there for some reason on my birthday Honestly, I was laughing so much because I was thinking to myself, the, remember the night, right? It was a Café de Paris night and I think we had a table for your birthday and you'd been on some really strong tablets pain for killers. something. You know what it pain was? Painkillers. I'd had work done on my teeth. You had you had like one drink. Can you remember? And, and I, was had gone, to, I had gone to leave. Dead. <laughs> Can you remember? That was so And our friend bad. Mark basically was like... My friend, but that just shows you how you cannot drink any alcohol if you're on so, like something like that. Strong painkillers. That made me laugh. But anyway, it's exactly the same layout. Obviously, you go in, there's the stack. Well, well, they've got the stage and then they've got all the tables. The show was incredible. Like, <laughs> hello, Arthur. Hi, Arthur mister. Hello. Are you okay? Yeah. <gasps> Hi. Mwah. Tell him Hi. I said have a lovely holiday next week. We'll have to FaceTime. Thank you. Thank you. I've moved, guys, and... For those that are watching YouTube, this is the office dumping ground at the moment, so it's very messy behind me. Please ignore it. Let's get back to Leo's. So, yes, yeah, so there's a show. Um, there's one sitting at half eight. There's an amazing show, and it actually gets better as it goes on. You know, like sometimes it can start and you think, oh, this is going to be a little bit cheesy, but actually it was really good. Very, like, high quality, if you know what I mean. So, mm -hmm. But it was ridiculously expensive, and I just think that... I know the prices are premium because they're putting on a show. 
you're paying for the entertainment, aren't you, really? You are. And I genuinely do think that it, it is very extortionate. Like, I can give you an example. Um, but it would be something that you maybe just do once or once a year. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's, it's like an experience. I think so. So, like, a tomato salad was £38. Um, wow. Spaghetti, uh, <gasps> sp- a that lobster spaghetti a was £175. <gasps> Oh my goodness, no, that is extortionate. It's shocking. And, you know, my friend, like us girls, it was, the boys were sort of on one end and us girls were sort of the other. And we was really laughing because to start, we just ordered like starters. I think we had uh, like ham, you know, like jamon. <laughs> yeah. So we had jamon. that. Yeah, we was all calling it jamon on the nights. So we had like two plates of that because it's not one plate's not enough for six, basically. No, of course. So you have one plate of that bread the tomato salad and um it came with like a really nice sauce and what was the other thing oh prawns to start and then us girls were laughing we were saying i think we're done like and we kept saying can we get some more bread please because we knew what was coming with the main (laughs) yeah of Um, course and then we was like look you know it is a one-off big night out so let's just treat ourselves but it was ex Extortionate. Well, drinks really expensive because usually it's the alcohol at them sort of places as well. This really drinks were very drinks were normal to what you'd pay in like a in nice London. bar okay. slash restaurant in London. I think that the food is really high because, like I said, they have to obviously cover costs of all the performers. And but I will say, I mean, it obviously had to be good for that price. The food was good. That's good because sometimes. You find at those kind of places when it's all about the entertainment, the food lacks a little bit, and you, you and you think, 100%. oh, but you go for the entertainment and the drinks, and the food's not amazing. That's good to know. Absolutely, that it is good quality food. But yeah, I mean, I really want to go. Can we go? Can we do a girls' night there? I still haven't had a girls' night out for about a year, over a year. I've got two dates in your diary that I filled. One is we're going to Luana live oh, which yes. is that'll be really good fun yeah that'll louisa, be brilliant actually so louisa um as you most of you probably know and anna have got a podcast called blue anna anyway they do their live shows so it was billy i was telling you this story i think i can't remember when i was at louisa's a couple of weeks ago she was like you've got i said i really want to come to the live show like which like when so we've sorted it all out and she was like do you want a box or do you want to be in the audience i went look i really don't mind i said whatever's available we'll take she went i'll probably i'll put you in a box and i went oh great i went that'll be a joke of the night and we was laughing yeah. saying we'll be like the box wankers like you know like <laughs> yeah. i know if she'll make fun of us Woo-hoo! but anyway <laughs> so we are going there that night and then also in may or no june i miss mean, miles away isn't it we're going magic mike remember Paris. Oh, yes. Paris oh, yeah, is next month. Yeah, I've got a month. few things in the diary. That's true. But we do yeah. need, like, aside from that, we do need another something. I, I a totally agree. A fun girl's night at Leo. Yeah, and that was fun. But anyway, so what was I saying? What was the whole point of this story? Oh, I stuck to gin and tonic. That was what I was saying. Yeah. So G&T. I didn't have any wine, any Prosecco or champagne. I just stuck to gin and teas all night. And actually, by the time we got home, it was quite late. I mean, I never do these nights. I think it was about two and um, poor little Paul coming at half six, mummy. And it was obviously the last day of term. It was on the Fridays. Come in, he was like, "Come on, you need to get up. We're going to be late." I went, "What's the time?" Because I thought my alarm hasn't gone off, and I set my alarm for seven. I usually set it earlier, but I thought yeah. try and get a bit longer. And I went, "Paul, please let mummy have an extra half hour." While he was having none of it. Oh, so I no. literally walked down the stairs in my like my eyes were like half shut, and it wasn't that I was really hungover. I was like, "Really, I've only had Just four tired. hours sleep, if that." And then obviously then Edward woke up and then I really wanted to lay back down with Edward when he napped, but I couldn't because we had people in the house. So, you know, you're like, yeah, you just can't. Story of my life. And then I just think you don't ever really catch up on that sleep, do you? Because like you say, oh, I'm going to have an early night. By the time you get into bed, I think it was about half nine. And then you just sort of, then I was doing the night feeds of Edward and I was like, oh, like you don't really catch up, do you? It's no. Just you a... definitely pay the price for a late night out when you're a parent, like oh. you do. And it takes, I think it actually takes a few days to get out yeah, of the Oh, it does. <laughs> but I just think on those big nights when you know you're going to be late, actually, you're best off having somebody that's going to be there for you the next morning until like 12 o'clock. <laughs> so yeah. You can get yourself yeah. together. <laughs> that would be the dream. I hear you're going to Elton John today. Yes. Tonight. Oh my goodness. I am so excited. So Greg said to me last week, he was like, I'm going to take you on a date because we haven't been on a date for... We haven't been on a date since before I had Margot, like 
just us. Yeah. Anyway, so I was just the two of you going. It is, but well, two of us going for for lunch, and then we're meeting Sarah and Dave. Oh, okay, brilliant. They're coming. They're coming with us to El Job, which I'm really pleased about because they're two of our friends, which I haven't seen for a while. So, um, and I always think it's quite fun, isn't it, to go to a concert with like some friends? Of as well. course, yeah. So, in case anyone doesn't know, I am the biggest Elton John fan, and I have been so excited. And it's the start of his tour tonight. So, at the O2. Um, it's going to be amazing. I am so excited. So, we're going out for late lunch. Um, Where are you going? We're, gonna, do, do you know we're, we're going to somewhere called um, Gloria's. It's in Liverpool Street. Have you heard oh, of it? It's yeah, I have heard of it. I've never been, but I think I've heard of it. Yeah, so we're going there, and then we're going to head straight to the O2, because I think he comes on really early, like, pretty early. Greg's like, he's one of their max that comes on, like, at seven. So I think we've got to be at the O2 for about six. Um, I'm so excited, literally. I'm, it's going to be I just brilliant. Can't wait. Did you, you know what? You, you ignored my voice note the other day. And no, I, sorry. <laughs> about going? <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. I'm really... <laughs> they, do you know what? Went, She's going to Elton John. I was like, ah, that's why she didn't reply. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we'll definitely be up for that as well. Because it's that's too late. Till May. What oh. I done was so on the um on the app I've got that like the concierge app thing, I was like it, it keeps promoting the Elton John tour. I was like, yes, right. Because obviously we all had tickets, didn't we, for before yeah, COVID or whenever it was. I can't remember. Anyway, so a box was there or available and it was like you do have to get 20 guests and I know that it ends up being a time bit more expensive but I was thinking if we can get 20 of us together it'd be great so I, I messaged you and a few others and then by the time I messaged them in the morning saying Look, I'll take it anyway because I was thinking definitely You'll easily we'll get, get rid of the tickets, 20 yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like oh, we're really sorry um, we've already released the box to somebody else I was like oh, I knew it because you know like it's such a big concert everyone cool. wants to see it because yeah. it's his farewell tour anyway so we lost it but i've told them put to put me on a waiting list um for anything that comes available so if it does obviously i'll let you know yeah, yeah i no. really want to see him yeah he, i mean he's just a complete legend isn't he really yes of course like he yeah i'm so excited i don't think he's even kicked in yet like i need to get some elton john songs on when i get ready this afternoon so have you got tic- <laughs> have you got tickets or are you joining a box no in a box yeah oh, that'd be so good what are you gonna yeah, wear really are you excited. going elton john themed <gasps> no and the thing is like, let's say if it was like all of us but because it's all quite last minute and we're going for lunch before i can't really really i should i should have something like the glittery flares on i was gonna say mum's coming back do you want me to ship back the glittery uh, flares for you <laughs> i would do but it's gonna be a bit much isn't it trotting around into a restaurant on a sunday afternoon in them it's just because it's sunday afternoon yeah I that's have what I'm saying, got, it's a friday or saturday i've got this really nice black velvet blazer and all down the sleeves is like like it's diamonds all down each sleeve. It's quite Elton, but you probably oh send me some pics. I send you some pictures of it, but but then it might it's a little less subtle. But then, if I was going straight to the O2, I'd be. But can you remember what Greg wore on my thirtieth when you've all done the Elton John song to me? Yes. <laughs> Imagine Greg turning up in that. Greg went. I would have worn it. But it doesn't fit me. That's so funny. Yeah. Do you know what? I reckon there'll be a few. Actually, yeah, I reckon there'll be a lot. Of there will be. You know, maybe, or maybe just take some funky sunglasses or something, you know, yeah. like, because you'll probably want to get some fun pictures. Cause... I should have been a little bit more organised, but it was all quite last minute, to be honest. And, but yeah, I'm really excited. So I'll be sending you some videos and pics later. Right. Perfect. I can't wait. Oh, you're going to have so much fun. I'm really jealous. This podcast is brought to you by Dykeman, where you can find big brand trainers from Nike, Adidas and Puma at the best price. I think it's safe to say that we both love trainers. I actually don't think I wear anything else at the minute. I know, me too. Because you can even dress up a nice pair of fresh trainers. I do that all the time. I recently actually wore like a trouser suit with a white t-shirt and a pair of trainers. It looked lovely. I love that. I do think with a pair of brand new trainers, it can just make an outfit, can't it? Absolutely. So you guys, we have something very exciting to tell you about. Dykeman offers quality footwear at affordable prices. So much so that if you find an identical pair of shoes elsewhere, Dykeman will price match and give you an additional £1 back. And if you think that's great, Dykeman are also offering a buy one, get one half price offer on all Feel and Sketcher trainers 
from the 27th of March to the 30th of April. Oh, that's exciting. You can get a nice fresh pair for spring. Yeah, that would be great. And the offers don't stop there. Dykeman are giving a 10% discount exclusively to the Sam and Billy Show podcast listeners with code Sam and Billy 10. So that's a 10% discount with the code Sam and Billy 10, valid until the end of April. Also, make sure you check out the episode description for the links and offers. Enjoy! So, Easter holidays. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> Here we go. Um, mine broke up on Friday, did yours? Mine broke up Thursday. Oh, yeah, mum said. Friday, so. Yeah, mum said. <clears throat> so, obviously, as you know, mine get basically four weeks off, which I just oh, think is. That is. It's just too much time off, especially when that summer's is, just around the corner. Like three weeks, okay, but four weeks. It's basically another summer holiday. I wonder why. Like, I just it's wonder. Ridiculous. Like, it's a lot four of time. Weeks. Anyway, what do you so do with them for four weeks, like, well, it's so hard because I mean, and also the weather, right? So our garden oh, is flooded. Don't get like, me started. <laughs> I'm honestly like, I mean, you're pretty set up at your house. If yeah. the weather was nice. Now you've got your swimming pool, you've got your deck in, you know, you've got your little garden barbecue, it all looks, it's all done. Like, as isn't done, but it, we'd still make it manage, but it is flooded. Like, I can't even tell you it, like, we've, we've got two ducks. We have two <gasps> ducks now we, in our paddock because it's flooded so bad that they're floating about Shush. like a pond. They think it's a pond. Yes. <laughs> and the turf that we had laid like um, a few months back, is just flooded. So even like if the kids sort of, because half the garden we re turfed, didn't we? So if you like put your foot on it, it's like deep and then squelches and then it's like you need basically wellies on. So anyway, the, we're not set up and where the weather's still a bit naff. I was like, I said to Paul, I was like, should we go on holiday? Obviously it's always something that I would definitely prefer. But, it, ideally, it was going to be, I said to Paul, maybe we should stay at home this Easter and just carry on because we've got the, getting the bathroom done. But um, uh, we said, I said, right, well, let's look at going away. So we are going away, but we're going to, this time, we're going to do half and half. So we're doing half the time in an apartment and then half the time in a hotel because we're at such a long time. Yeah, cool. It just is like to break it up a little bit. And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to Dubai and we're doing the first part of the trip in an apartment, which is quite nice. I said to Paul, it's like, it'll be like we're kind of living it a little bit, you know? Yeah, of course. So I said, when we get there, I'm going to have to go to the supermarket, stock up the fridge. But then like the also, last... Also, that'll be really nice because then you've got the first part in the apartment and then yeah. the next part you can look forward to having the service because I love... Like, obviously, in Dubai, the hotels are just amazing, aren't they, and the service. So it'd be nice and to have like, that bit to look forward to as well. Yeah, and I said to Paul, we haven't actually been away as a family for this long, like in one chunk. Yeah, so, how lovely. Yeah, I'm really excited. And obviously, um, the bathroom's still going to be getting done over here. I'm going to have someone that can sort of monitor that, which is quite a good thing because they're ripping the whole thing out. You know, they're going to be worksmen or tradesmen, like up and down the stairs. You know, like, it's actually, I think it's quite nice to not oh, be yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, completely. And fuss over the fact that there's going to be, like, dust and loads of people in your house. I was thinking, I'm actually quite glad that we're going to come home and hopefully it'll just be done. You know, it's like... Be done, yeah. Because I think if I was here, I'd be stressing a bit as well about, oh, like, oh, everyone arri we, arriving every day. We still have workmen in our house, I'd say, during Monday to Friday, at least three, to three, to three days out of the five-day week. Like, it's still constantly... And it is so like I can't explain it. you just feel like you're you can't relax it's like not your house isn't to yourself mm. so yeah I think you're doing the right thing um, actually because Louisa she went out to she's been out a few times and they usually get a, a villa and she sent me a, a whatsapp list because she was like they done a whole chunk out there didn't they a couple oh, times yeah, cool. she sent me this whatsapp list look it's really good um of all family things to do like so stuff handy. you know like I know that we've obviously been going for a long time, but actually there's some things on here I thought, oh, yeah, actually I wouldn't do, I've never done that. You know, there's, yeah. she's put like a big long list of things. So I was thinking, because we're out there for a while, I can actually get about and do some bits and bobs with the kids. So what I'm going to do is 
when we get back on this podcast, I will like do kind of like a bit of a family yeah, like breakdown what you did and yeah, things to do with kids, you know. Um, but anyway, tell me about your trip. Mum's very excited because Mum's going with yes. you. Yes. So we're off to the Maldives, which I'm so so excited for because. I do feel like obviously Abu Dhabi was amazing, but it was quite full on, wasn't it? Like for us, because we was filming as well there. I mean, don't get me wrong. We are also filming in the Maldives. Um, (laughs) Can't go anywhere without them. Yeah. Um, So we, yeah, we are filming in the Maldives as well. Um, But I'm really looking forward to going on holiday, not wearing shoes, not having Mm. to like rush around and get dressed up like I just want to relax and we're going to an island where there's loads going on for the kids as well which is really fun however the journey we need to talk about the journey so obviously the flight is sort of around 12 and a half hours so we've got the direct flight Mm -hmm. to Mali yeah we then have to get on a another flight not a seaplane um like a another like domestic Commerce, flight domestic Mar- oh no yeah domestic flight which is about and just over an hour about an hour and a half right so we get on we get off at Mali get on another flight Ooh, for an hour that, and a half that's the furthest I've ever must, heard of an island the island to be. must be so far like for seaplanes not even be able to get to it and then we have to get on a speedboat what for half an hour to get to the island so basically I was working out a taxi to the airport two planes a speedboat, and then we'll be there. So it's quite intense. Mm, they better be waiting for you with a nice glass of fizz oh, or a and cocktail. This is, and, and then we had a nightmare trying to... Like, Greg Greg was on the phone the other night to the airline company, no names mentioned, um, like, talk, trying to get a bassinet because they were trying to say that they had no bassinets left. But obviously, Margot's four months now. She needs to be... She can't be in my arms the whole time. She gets aggravated. Like, she needs to yeah. be able to sleep and lay down. That was going round in circles. Anyway, we finally we got we got a bassinet in the end, but like it's I'm sort of split up from the others, which I don't know could be quite a good thing in a way. <laughs> oh, um, that's hilarious! When you say split up from the others, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sort of on my own in the bassinet. They, they, I think they're like a row, two rows behind me. But anyway, so. This sounds terribly ungrateful because I'm so, so excited for the trip. But there's this little part of me which is really dreading the journey. And I shouldn't think but like you that. Know what? Just be positive. I was, get about say, worth it. I was about to say, just change your mindset. Mindset, yeah. And just power completely. on through because there's nothing you can do and about be it. be grateful that actually we're going on this amazing trip. And it's going to be Margot's first time in the Maldives. Like, Maldives is our favourite place in the world. Like, yeah. we just... We you're just gonna have, have it there. Do you know what? And once, once, once you're there, you're there. You can just forget about it, and then exactly. just enjoy yourself, relax, go and get a massage. You might need a lymphatic drainage massage after all that flying and travelling. Oh, <laughs> don't! It's going to be intense. Like I said to Greg, we need to be so organised. And this is the other thing. Like I feel like when you go to the Maldives, especially with a baby. You, you really do need to have everything. You know, it's different when you go to other countries because you can just pop to the shop and get what you need. But if yeah. you run out of something <clears throat> on one of them islands, chances are they're yeah. not going to have it. Like, they might have yeah. nappies and wipes, but that's about it. Like, you can't... So, oh, I'm actually... Well, at least, at least you have got mum and you're not outnumbered. <clears throat> no, exactly. So that's, it's like, yeah. that, it would be more intense if it was... Oh. Obviously, just the two of you and the three kids. And the three kids, that would have been... I don't think Greg you know would have what? gone for it. <laughs> really? So I was thinking about um, even our flight going out now, because Edward, you know, he's going to be one in May. He's, he's really big, but, you yeah. know, he can't have his own seat. So, you know, I'm thinking about our flight. I know it's not as long as that, it's six hours, but he's big now and he's going to have to, oh, like, you know, that. He, he lays on me, on me. he's got to lay on like, me or Paul, Um and you know, it's like after six hours of them being on, it's your back, isn't it? It's like your lower yeah. back. It's like, mm. but it's you just have to intense. get through it. And then once you you're do, there, you're there, and then it's worth it. I feel like every parent is never going to enjoy a flight with kids. Like it's just, it is what it is, isn't it? Of course. You've just got to think, think of the end goal, think of the cocktail waiting, and that's it. <laughs> it doesn't really get easier until they're five, I guess. <laughs> four, four, yeah, five. Well, I mean, Arthur's six now, and he's... I mean, don't get me wrong, they're fine, but he 
he can still be a bit of a pest, you know, like, <laughs> like intense, like wants to like, especially because like, if I'm with Margot, he'll be, yeah, I know what's going to happen. Mm. He's going to be like a little shadow lurking over me the whole flight. <laughs> oh, bless. Oh. Anyway, just got, I've just got to breathe, relax. Yeah, you'll do and it. And just, yeah. <laughs> that is, that is a long Can't even think though. about coming home. Can't even think about Oh, no, home. you can't do that. Remember last week we said we need some mum confessions, like to make it quite funny and for people to speak about some funny things. We've got loads on here. So, should we go ahead and have a little read? I'll yes. read a couple first. So, uh, this, <laughs> went for a poo at camping and blamed my daughter. She was angry, but I paid her £10. That is hilarious. <laughs> what? Uh, so, she wanted to, she didn't want to take the blame for the poo? Yeah. That's that so hilarious. funny. Yes. We've all done that. You know what, actually, this happened to me a little while ago. Where was it? It was me and Rosie. I can't remember. Yeah, it was me and Rosie, <laughs> and we'd stopped off in a service station on the way home from somewhere, and she went, I needed to the toilet. And I went, actually, so do I. So me and her have gone in, and when I went to the toilet, I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting, you know, to go. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Um, there was, and as we came out, we, there was no one there, no one queuing. And as we came out, um, there was like five or six people waiting to get into the toilet. I was like, oh, I was thinking, <laughs> but I, didn't, I didn't say anything. And it wasn't like horrendous, but I, I was thinking, thank God I got Rosie with me. Cause yeah, at least it could her. be, yeah, it could have been her. <laughs> <laughs> this one's hilarious. Toddler put dad's toothbrush down the loo. I put it back and said nothing. <laughs> That's the sort of thing I would do. Oh, that'll be all right. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, um, I forgot my little boy's nappies and had to put a sanitary pad on him. <laughs> had a ton of poo. You gotta do what you gotta do. That's, That's really hilarious. Funny. But do you know what? They're probably the same. It's the same, same concept anyway, isn't it? It's the same sort of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I have eaten my son's Easter egg from his grandparents. That's hilarious. <laughs> Could just be re- rebuy it, replace it. Funny um, they say that. Mum came round yesterday with mini egg Easter eggs for the kids, and then one for Paul and I. And they've they've been demolished, as you can imagine. Like they've, yeah, they've, last night it was like a chocolate fest in this house, oh. and um, we done the same. Me and Paul. So they had the mini eggs and the egg, and so we yeah at the egg at the egg minute, yeah. Bad we'll parents. Oh, this is funny. I play hide and seek with my kids and don't look for them. It gives me five minutes peace. I've actually done that before. That's brilliant. I've, ha- That's I've actually said that. Come on, let's play hide and seek. And they go off and they yeah. hide. And you just think, All right, quick five minutes, make a cup of tea or catch up on the phone. And then you hear them going, Mom, Mom. That's <laughs> hilarious. Like, That's genius. I'm coming. <laughs> I need to do that one, actually. It's a good one. Might do that today. Um, <laughs> My son had a birthday party to go to, but I was so hungover I didn't take him. I told him the kid. I told him the kids. The kid was ill. <laughs> oh I let I let him make him a get well card to take to school the next day and everything. Wow, that went to that went to extreme lengths. That's so oh, funny. That is really funny. While I remember, I've got a really funny mum confession. What I did last mm. weekend, right? So um, we took Arthur and a couple of his friends to Chesington. Obviously, Paul come as well. Yeah. And any, anyway, on the way there, so I had three boys in the back, nearly went horse riding, Margot stayed at home. Yeah. So we, um, three boys in the back, um, me and Greg in the front, well, you can imagine the noise, they were so oh, excited, they did yeah. not stop talking, like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. it was like, they were shouting, it, but you know, like, you just, it, like, I was really laughing, but Greg was getting like, you could tell Greg was like, okay, I'm trying to concentrate and drive now, and also they kept tapping Greg on the shoulder. Oh, that's right? really annoying. So kept basically tapping. he was, so basically he was like totally tuned into them. No, completely, I was just sitting there laughing, like on my phone, like, you know, letting it go over my head. Anyway, so... In the end, um, me and Greg went, should we play the quiet game? Right. <laughs> and um, and we did it. Right. And you won't, honestly, they was quiet, I'd say, for about half an hour. No. In the oh, they really yeah. went for it. And no, so whoever the winner was, was getting a five pound note. Right. Ah, So okay. we played it. And then, and then it worked. And then we did it again. And then we did it on the way home as well. Well, that bloody dinosaur that... Paul oh, come home with. So I know they ha- they all got one. Honestly, they, they ride it around the the kitchen and like there's not enough going on in, in my kitchen and all Apple's toys everywhere. Oh, it's how funny. basically Greg? I don't know. They, they 
won these massive, massive, like, ride on kind of dinosaur things. And when no, I picked they're up Paul, the sort of things no parent wants to leave a theme park with. Then we've got we've got one in our playroom as well now. They are oh, ridiculous. it's hilarious. Actually, I've got a video of Greg walking out with it. I'll we'll pop it on the Instagram. It's funny. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's in the lounge. And what happened was it it burst. And do you know, like all those little oh, tiny? Oh no. So, oh no, they fixed him. So, and obviously for us, it's like a danger hazard because of Edward. Like, he puts course, everything in his yeah. mouth. So, oh, no. I was like, the dinosaur's going to have Sorry to go. And they were like, no. Like, you can imagine, can't you? They want to keep him. So, we've had to basically stitch and sellotape. Oh, it's, it's like no. it's got a plaster. Plaster so on, bandage. We, we've still got it. And also, just to say, for those that are going Chesterton Easter holidays, Paul said the vampire ride was his favourite. Oh, they we went on it five times. Yeah, so he was. It li- was brilliant. He said it was brilliant, and he had the best day ever. So yeah, yeah thank you for that. Yeah, the vampire was brilliant. Okay, vampire was brilliant. Right, darling, go out for five minutes. Okay, good boy. Right. There you go, sweetheart. Five um, minutes, and we're done. Yeah, it was honestly, it was so much fun. We did have, we did have a really good day. Yeah, yeah. He, he loved it. And actually, yeah. do you know what? It's it's one of those things where. Um, it was probably quite nice for Paul to be on his own with you and just yeah. kind of, you know, that oh, he bit was. Of they, sort of they, independence and yeah, he was. And they they were all so good, you know. Like you think, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. Sometimes, like you it know, it's a bit kids, chaotic. You can't. Yeah, but they was all so good. Like they all ha- like I mm. made them all hold hands and like so that they was with me because you imagine my eyes were everywhere. Like and it was packed. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can so imagine. I was like, yeah, but anyway, it was fun. Good fun. Um, Shall we go on to ask us anything? Yeah, let's go for it. Oh, here's a good one. Do you ever Google yourself? Yes. Yes, but do you know what? So there's these things called Google Alerts. Oh, I'm not on that. There's these things called Google Alerts. No, I I was always on it, right? Anyway, I took myself, I unsubscribed from it about, probably about two years ago because it used to come up. So you'd get like a notification email on your phone. Yeah, so if ever your your name's name was mentioned the in the or... internet, they'd send you an alert. And But some of the stuff was so ridiculous, right? And there's like these really bad forums. Do you know what I'm oh, talking about? it's called Tattle. It should That's not it. even yes. be allowed. Tattle should okay. not even be allowed to be a thing. It is so nasty. So poisonous. And horrible, like... Yeah. So I actually unsubscribed because I used to see these things like, and then I used to be like, what the hell is this? And it's basically forums where people write stuff like, basically just just bitch about nasty things about, yeah, people in the public It's just so weird. Anyway, so I I took myself off Google Alerts, but every now and then, It's like the hate brigade, isn't it? Yeah, it's really sad. It's really sad (laughs) because those people must be so sad in their own life. They literally go on there and they just write really horrible things, basically, don't they, about people Mm. in the public eye. Yeah, yeah, it's a good really one. Odd. So, so you, you removed it because so they was re- coming up. So I removed that. Yeah, removed mm. re- removed myself from that. But every now and then, like if I if I know I've been like papped or pictured, then yes, I will Google myself because then you yeah. want to see like what comes up, like what articles have been written and exactly. So I haven't had Google alerts since back in the Towie days, purely for that reason because you'd see yeah. everything and even the negative stuff. And it's actually not a good thing to be reading mm-hmm. and, and doing. It's no. not good for your headspace. So I don't do that. But every now and then, like you said, like we had a. Uh, a press day the other day for Revive College and I was like oh right okay 24 hours has passed I'm going to google it and so yeah. I google my name and certain keywords because I want to search to see what's been released exactly the same as what you said but yeah. it's very very rare because I, I feel like as well like the, the the pap side of things isn't as crazy as it used to be as well because obviously no. if you have social media you're not getting paps like you used to um but yeah I have a little google every now and then and see what's been said and mm-hmm. I miss a lot of stuff because I'm not on Google Alerts. And then sometimes oh, you think, oh, I didn't even see that. Or, I, you know, they've pulled something up or someone said something yeah. about you in the press. And you're like, oh, I missed that. Well, sometimes um, like someone will send me an article that I mm. haven't seen. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's this? And then I read it and it's just sometimes it's just like the most ridiculous things. Like some of yeah. the online, like I think they love to look through the comments on your Instagram. Like there's been a couple of things that I've posted recently where... I think we might have spoken about this where like they there's like hundreds of lovely comments but they pick out the negative and make like a negative article about it so I had that mm. with um when we bought Nelly a horse oh, and then I also had it happen. I know just ridiculous and then yeah. but then what I mean there was hundreds of good comments and then there was like two negative and the online's managed to make 
a negative article out of that, which is quite annoying and frustrating, but it is, it is what it is, isn't it? It happens. I just knew that was going to happen. Like, it was just one of those things, it's like, of course, it's inevitable. It's just a given, like, they just want to find something. It's a very they? sad, sad world, the whole the media time. Huh? Okay. Clambering over me to get some paper. Mummy needs to organise this office, don't I? We'll do it when we get back. <laughs> another yeah, day. Yeah, um, another day. <clears throat> okay, so, does Sam still have a passion for, for photography and would she ever use her skills at a photo shoot? I love photography i mean even on our last trip to abu dhabi i've got my big camera with me haven't i yeah do you know what's it re- really funny yeah so we was watching the old mummy diaries last night me and the kids because you know how they love to watch it and it was where you was heavily pregnant we were shooting stuff for minis but i was shooting stuff for minis but you were shooting me and we was at um hut and hall yeah and it was me and, and you was really heavily pregnant right it was just so funny like and you was you was my hilarious <laughs> Yeah, I honestly I I love, love watching it. the old ones. It's so much fun. So to that question, I do really love photography and I think I'll always have a passion for it. It's just, you know, another thing that takes up a lot of time and effort. I think maybe when the kids are older, I can explore it a bit more. Right, okay, last one. Okay, would Billy make any changes to her wedding if she could do it all over again? Last question. Um, I get asked this quite a lot, actually, like about with my dress, would I have a different wedding dress? No. I know, I have it... one. Oh, go on. Oh, go on. <laughs> go on. I remember you said to me, I think the next day it was, um, you, you said to me, I wish that I had took my time when I walked down the aisle and just took it all in a bit more. You said yeah. that you felt like you kind of, you said you felt like all of a sudden you was there and you was at the altar and it was like yeah. you didn't take any of it in. I think because what happened was, so... One actually, one mistake that I made, which actually links up to this, is that we didn't have a real wedding coordinator on the day, right? So we had people there, like the set, but we didn't have someone that was that was solely their job. So what happened was I was like ready for our hours, but then I wasn't ready, like the final touches, and then we didn't realise that obviously we had a time to get to the altar, but then all of a sudden we see. Can you remember the speed goat? Speedboat, speedboat, speedboat go yeah. past <clears throat> with like Greg and everyone. They was making their way up to the um, to the island. Yeah, where you got married. Yeah, <laughs> and and then I, it was all like mad. It was rushed, wasn't it? Right. Oh my god, they're on the way. Quick, get ready. It was like getting out the door. And yeah, I felt felt like it was such a faff, like rushing and getting up to the sandbank. Then what happened was I walked quite quickly when yeah. really I should have just taken my time. And just really, yeah, because that all the build up on your wedding day, that that part is like, and also is, because sorry, just to um, to let everyone know, because you're getting married in the Maldives, the sun doesn't set, and it's very hot, really hot, and the sun doesn't set until a certain time. So actually, Billy didn't, Billy and Greg didn't get married until like early evening, did you? Because we wanted the sun set, and obviously it was too hot for everyone to sit out on that bank. So actually, it was like a very it was we quite had a an really anxious, small frame. But it was quite an ang- it was a very long day. Then all of a sudden, it was like, right, we need to go now because the sun is at the perfect point. Like, it yeah. was just like, and then all of a sudden, it all oh, happened really don't. quick. And then the wedding photos, we had to get done in such a small amount of time because yeah. we wanted them at, like, golden hour, sunset. And thank God, it worked out absolutely fine in the end. But... I was actually quite, I was panicking, thinking, oh no, I don't think we've got enough. And I remember, I remember the photographers going, thinking, yeah. I remember even them like being like, oh, we don't know if we've got this. And But at the end of the day, like you obviously you do want to spend time on your photos because that's what you've got to mm-hmm. that, for that moment, isn't it? But equally, the photo part of your wedding is quite, it's a little bit annoying because mm. you just want to, you just want to go and celebrate, don't you? But you have to do it. You just have to. You do need those memories. And that's the thing. And obviously where you was doing it with a magazine as well, like they want their specific shots. Whereas I guess, and I yeah. that's under, that is understandable because obviously, you know, it's like, it's kind of a job, isn't it? But when you've got a time limit with a sunset. Sun. I know it yeah, sounds ridiculous. That, but No, that was it. The light like, was going. It was going. Was like, I remember that it was going. going. I remember when the light was, the sun was setting, the light was going and... Um, we was going, right, all, all the boys, every single man, boys in, in, in. And it was like all yeah. the men were sort of like trying to get, we'd done all the most important ones and then it was like yeah. we were trying to get like bigger group, wasn't we? The fun ones, it yeah. Was chaos. But, but anyway, anyway, it was amazing. Okay, so that's all we have time for today, sister. We'll have um, a nice Sunday, whatever you do. 
So I'm cooking And I'll let roast. you know about Elton. Oh, can't wait to hear all about it. Yeah, so I'm I'm staying in my pyjamas all day, cooking a rose, and I'm going to make a start on packing later. So Oh, lovely. We can't wait to hear about Elton next week. Yes, I'll let you know. Okay, well, happy Sunday. Okay. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. <laughs>